Okay, so I want to do one last video on binary search trees. This will be very short. Honestly, I think it'll be pretty fun. It's going to be the visualization aspect of it. I'm using a website that I use pretty frequently when it comes to visualizing how some of these data structures work. I think it's really, really good. Uh, I'm going to have a link below for sure. Probably a card um, to the other videos detailing binary search trees. I'll probably have this website linked to all of those videos just because I think it's really, really good. But without further ado, let's go ahead and swap on over there. Here we go. So, this visualgo.net is going to be on binary search trees right up here. There's an AVL one as well. Let's go ahead and do binary search tree. We have empty, unbalanced, balanced, random, skewed left, skewed right. So, first, let's just go ahead and show a balanced one. This is what I typically write. It's something that looks pretty neat, pretty clean. Nothing too egregious happening here. Uh, and then if we look at a random one, we don't know what we're going to get. We got something very skewed to the left. Okay, so if we do, if we do a skewed left, you'll see what I mean. It's always going to have this left skew over here. There's not even a right subtree. Literally, this is just a linked list. This is just a linked list going from 90 to 10. <laughs> That's all it is. And if we do skewed right, then you'll see we have a linked list going from 4 to 76. And by that, I mean this is just a linear data structure because there's only one direction. And if we do an unbalanced example, this isn't... Uh, I mean... Mm, this, isn't, this isn't unbalanced enough. Hold on. This isn't... Okay, this... That's upsetting. Give me, give me an... This is gonna be the same thing over and over again. That's random getting did me. That, that's more what I was looking for. Hold on. That this is more what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, give me an unbalanced tree. This is the same thing. Okay. It's it's being hateful. Fine, we'll do random. It's just giving me the exact same thing over and over again. I don't know if that's on purpose of the site or not, but I was doing it earlier and it was giving me a lot of just egregious versions of it. But uh, this is good. This looks pretty. This looks pretty heinous, honestly. So I want something that looks particularly bad, just because it's going to be a better, uh, a lot more data to go through and parse and see just kind of how things are going to work. So let's see. Uh, let's go with we have uh, ranging from one to 95 that looks like our range here so 39 is a root so if we want to put something on, let's skip that on the left side so anything below 39 should be good let's there's almost nothing in 20 so let's give a let's insert let's enter a 26 let's see what happens you're gonna see a highlight up here traverse left left now it's right and then we have a left tree because 26 is less than 28. So you can see the path it's taking. And if you want to come to this uh, website, you can actually change the speed of how these things are happening. And I'm pretty sure I could replay it. Yeah, so you can replay it to see the actual track it's taking. You can see how it's navigating. And you can actually see the code that's being executed kind of over here. It's kind of pseudocode. It's not quite uh, any real code that I can think of, but it's got enough description that it should be able to uh, be figured out with some subtext. So we have a 37 here and a 39, so we'll be able to tell that 38 should fit real nice right here. So if we try on a 38, we should be able to tell where it's gonna go. It should go to the left to 31, go to the right to 37, go to the right from 38, and there we go. Now let's try something in the 40s range. Let's do a, let's do a quick 44. Let's do a right, then left, and then insert on the left child. And then maybe we're gonna do a um, let's see uh, let's do a 50 51 let's do 51 yeah I think 51 would be good 51 to right left right left and left yeah so you can kind of see how this is gonna happen and I can put in more arbitrary data nothing really is going to change but uh, before we start doing deletions I want to take a step and look at the predecessor and successor 
uh, aspects down here. So let's find a value in here. Actually, you know what? Let's do 39. Let's do 39. We want to find the predecessor to 39. It should be 38 because it should be the rightmost child of the left subtree from 39. So 39, let's take our left subtree, it's going to start at 31, get the rightmost child, it's going to be 38. So let's go ahead and get the predecessor. So 39 goes to 31, and then we start going for our right children. And there we go. So we find the successor, the opposite of that, we should get 44. So let's find the successor of 39. Go to the right subtree and get the leftmost child of 44. Now, the successor of, say, 48 should be a pretty interesting one. So let's do 48 and get its successor. Should be that 51 down there. Leftmost child of its right subtree. And these are the two things that we use for second degree deletions. I know that this site uses successor based two degree deletion and that's why I altered my code for my binary search tree to match this just so if you're looking at my code and you get confused at how things are working you can come to the site and it should be pretty much a one to one behavior as to what's happening. So for the removal let's go ahead and do a zero degree. Let's get rid of that 67 down there. It's a little bit too far. Well, actually, you know what? Let's get rid of, let's get rid of 93. 93 is not really doing anything. So let's go ahead and get rid of it. So start at 39. Traverse is down. That's less than. And then we just have a zero degree deletion. No big deal. Now, another really, really easy to visualize one is going to be 80. So it's going to go down. It's going to say, here's 80. It has a child, so now we just move that into place and remove 80. And I think a more interesting one should be this 31 over here. So let's try deleting 31. 31 has two children, and it has two full subtrees off of it. So we could, if we do predecessor, it would replace it with a 28. It is the rightmost child of the left subtree. But Based on their code, I'm pretty sure we're going to get 34 in place for the leftmost child of the right subtree. So let's go ahead and do 31 real quick and see what happens. So start 39, go to 31. Leftmost child, right subtree, and there we go. Now, I think another one that would be interesting is if we try and get rid of 34. So it's going to go for the leftmost child of the right subtree. That should be 37 so let's see what happens I actually haven't tested this so I'm very interested to see what's going to happen um, 34 yep I think I deleted I deleted 37 I'm so sorry that was the wrong thing to delete I meant to delete 34 oh well well you know what we can delete 34 now do we put 38 in place Rightmost child, right subtree, leftmost child. It was the only child, and it still did it over the left tree. Now, let's take a look. Let's see 48. 48 looks like it's in a pretty good position to have something pretty interesting to watch. So 48. Let's do this. Leftmost child of the right subtree, 51 right there. And I think if we do it again we should end up replacing 58. So let's do 51. We should get 58 in place there. And there we go. Okay, so this is a pretty decent tree, but I really want to let's create a balanced it's going to balance example. So that's pretty easy to read. And let's do some tree traversal and see what's going to happen. So the easiest one for me to explain is in order. In order, you start the root and then you do the left side. It's going to do its left side. That's 11. That'll return up. That's 20. Go down its right side. That is going to be 29 because there's no left side to deal with. It'll go down its right side. 32 It's going to go back up. 41 will handle itself, that's going to be 41. Its right side, it'll go down its left side. 
50, run itself out. There's no right child, left child, so it's going to pick up. 65 is going to print now. It's going to go down its right side. We're going to left side. 72 will print out because there's no children. Goes back up. 91 will print out because it's on its right side. No children, so print out 99. So you should end up with 11, 20, 29, 32, 41, 50, 65, 72, 91, 99. And that's pretty easy to tell. I did so on balance on re a purpose because essentially it's just left to right and it should be consistently increasing. So if we do in order, we should end up with 11, 20, 29, 32, 41, 50, 65, 72, 91, 99. So let's see what happens. We start at the root. Always on the left side first. And 20, 9, 32. It's going to traverse back up. 41 is going to handle itself. Left side. Handle itself. Handle itself. Right side. Left side. Handles itself. Goes back up. Handles itself. Right side. And handles itself. And I am kind of wish they display... Oh, here's the final order. It's very hard to see. I wish it kind of actually illustrated printing out the order, but that's okay. So 11, 20, 29, 32, 41, 50, 65, 72, 91, 99. Okay, so in order is not too bad. And again, if you want, you can slow it down. It's no problem. For now, let's take a look over at pre-order. So pre-order is going to actually print the data or store the data, do whatever you want with the data at the node first. Then it'll start traversing. So here, think about it. One at 41, and then left side goes to 20. It will print 20, so it end up 41, 20. Then it goes left side to 11, so 41, 20, 11. Nothing here. We did left side, so right side. 29, nothing here. 32, we end up traversing back up to 41. We go to the right side. So that'd be 65. 50, 91, 72, 99. So I think it's going to be 41, 20, 11, 29, 32, 65, 50, 91, 72, 99. Something like that. So let's just let's take a look. So 41, 20 handles itself, 11 handles itself, no children goes back up, right side, 29 handles itself, no left side. 32 handles itself, it's going to traverse back up to 41, go down right side, 65 is going to deal, 50 deals, no children, goes back up, 91, left side, no children, goes back up, 99, handles itself, and then traverses back up to the root, and we're done, and we end up with the 41, 20, 11, 29, 32, 65, 50, see, 91, 72, 99, okay, so it did work out the way I thought it was going to work out. be really embarrassing if it didn't. That's okay. So then if we do post order, that means it traverses the tree first and then deals with the data. This is probably the most obscure one to think about in my opinion because the last thing you're going to print is the root. So the leaves come first then the root. So let's see. Uh, so we'll start at the root. So it's going to be left side, left side, no children. Print out 11. Traverse back up, then right side, no left side, right side, 32. So I have 11, 32, 29, 20. I think. Yeah, 11, 32, 29, 20, and then 65, and 50, right side, 72, 99, 91, 65, 41. I think that'll be the post order solution. Oh, um, okay. So post order traversal will be added soon. Hmm. Well, if you want to determine the post order, I'm, I'm pretty sure 
it's 11, 32, 29, 20, um, 50, 72, 99, 91, 65, 41. I'm fairly certain that's the post order just after a quick look you can run it through the actual code I have posted and you can determine it there should be good but that was a little bit lackluster I thought they had all three done but oh well no harm no foul it's okay anyway so again I just want to make this a very quick video going over some of the actual visualization aspects and to really just show you how this resource works and it's honestly very very good even if it's not completely finished I still think it is really good in terms of portraying and visualizing what exactly is happening when it comes to binary search trees. And again, they have a lot of other algorithms as well. So hopefully this helps, hope you learned something, and I'll see you guys later.